Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're doing a bit of work in the fish room. So I've got these two tanks here, um, which are currently kind of shrimp and guppy tanks. And I've decided, as I might mention in my last video, that up here I'm going to have a row of shrimp tanks, a row of snail tanks, and then I'm going to move these tanks here because they fit better. Because if I show you this, it's just not the best use of space. So this is a tank that's only a foot deep whereas the shelves are 18 inches deep and there's a gap on either side as well whereas these tanks over here they are actually 18 inches deep and all almost four feet long which will fit this space better and um, this tank temporarily will just move over here but the idea is that i get a bigger five foot tank because this is a five foot span and uh, five foot by 18 inches that'll give me a much bigger space to do things with so job number one is to get the shrimp out of these and move them up here. I'll show you that. Up here we've got the shrimp tanks. So I've just got one, two, three of cherry shrimp. Eventually I'll get around to sorting them out into um, grades of shrimp. And then there's the red crystal shrimp is going to go over there. But the first part of the job is to get everything out of here. So what I've been doing for the last few days, I don't know if this is the best technique or not, um, but I can't find any better way of doing it is I've gone around with the net and caught what I can catch um, but for the ones that I can't I'm just getting a little bit of food putting it in a net that I've bent just literally bent here at the hinge bent it up just put in a tiny bit of food this is actually the generally discus soft which my discus like but the shrimp also really like so I've just put a little bit of that in there and lower it into the tank leave it for 10 minutes or so come back and hopefully there's a whole load of shrimp snacking on the food rinse and repeat all right i think we've got a few in there let's pull it out So we've got quite a few in there. This is just a process you need to repeat over and over and over and over again. So let's let these ones out. Right, we've got two out of the three uh, tanks drained. So this tank and the end tank are done. So I just need to get this one done and then we can have a bit of a switcheroo. Um, I've got most of the shrimp out of the end tank. It's just taking forever trying to catch them all, so I'm just going to drain this one enough that I can physically manhandle it and move it with the fish in it. And the one with the rainbow fish in it, I've left two or three inches worth of water and saved the water in some barrels just so as I'm not being a complete waste. Um, and I can fill that back up with the same water again. Um, I don't hold with this whole there's bacteria in the water and you'll ruin your cycle because I do 100% water changes all the time I'm just trying not to waste water um, so I've got a little pump here I'm going to drop into this tank and just move things along a bit faster just got a little bit of sponge so I don't soak up any shrimp so let's see how I get on right that's the tank switcheroo done and um, we've got the two new tanks there the lights moved over refilling now and we've got the rainbow tank moved over to this side now, if I haven't explained this already, the whole reason for doing this is because this gives me a five foot gap here. So five foot by 18, um, not 18 feet, 18 inches. So if I can find a replacement tank for this tank, I can have either one big tank, one big five foot tank here and have all sorts of things in there. Uh, bloody air pumps doing my head in. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but it's dying a slow and painful death. So the next video will more than likely be check out my new central air pump. Temporary position now for this tank. Um, these ones fit in a lot better, so you can see there's hardly any gaps left to the side. So it's making much better use of the space. Uh, this one obviously isn't, but it's just temporary. So we'll get this one refilled. I need to do some plumbing because obviously we've got the drains for these ones here, which are currently going onto the floor. So I need to make an extension bit for here. Something along the lines of this. So I'll swap that out for a T-piece and have them in there. Then I need to reroute some airlines. 
re-plug in some heaters, plug in some filters, make sure everything's all tickety-boo and we'll come back when we're a little bit more organised. So, new day, everything's filled, everything's leak tested, all the overflows, I've checked all them, repurposed them all, I've fitted a little bit of extra pipe so we can get these overflows in. So it's essentially just a little elbow, a T piece swapped out there and away we go. So all that's left to do is I've got to route the air lines a bit better because there's a bit of a jumble going on and then add a couple of extensions to the auto water change system. So the auto water change is essentially this. This one's special because it's got a tap on it but normally it's just one big long line that runs snakes through all the, the whole fish room and it's got these drip tips on the end and each one for each tank so all I need is a little tea piece like this and the drip tip there and these are just essentially just little screw in taps they're for a garden I think they're garden drippers they're called from B&Q or something like that and you just screw it to control how much you want to drip in and that way all the tanks can be fed uh, on constant drips with overflows and I never have to do water changes which sounds great but I don't actually do that all the time because some of the tanks especially the planted tanks if you leave it on a constant drip then you're not getting the best out of your nutrients and it's a bit daft to be doing constant water changes and constantly adding fertilizer and all that sort of thing so some of the ones with plants I don't actually drip I still have these in I'll just close them off uh, and then when I want to do a water change I'll open it leave it for an hour or so and close it again job done probably worth talking a little bit about the water change system if you can just ignore these pipes at the moment because that's actually these are connected to a flu valve fx5 filter which is down here filtering this tank behind me so it's a bit Heath Robinson but that's what it is this line here again ignore this this is the humidifier which is up there or the dehumidifier running to a drain here I could probably connect that straight down to one of those actually and not need to worry about that so someone asked me on Facebook the other day, how does it actually work? Hot and cold lines coming in. So originally the kitchen for this house was actually in the floor above this. And we moved the kitchen from up there to down here. And when we did, we capped off the water pipes that were feeding them. So all I've really done is reconnected them, uh, routed them through and they come down here as hot water pipes. It's all just push fit uh, fittings. So hot and cold into, so this is hot, this is cold. Um, controlled the pressure a little bit. I had these fitted, these little valves fitted, but they're fully open at the moment because I don't really need them. They go into this, which is a thermostatic mixer valve, a TMV valve, TMV2 sometimes you hear them referred to. It's essentially a shower valve, it's the same thing you have in a shower. And it has a little thing on top here where it's with an allen key but it did come with a fancier version but essentially you set the temperature that you want and then out the bottom of this comes the temperature you want so i think i've got it set at 25 degrees or something like that and um, no 20 degrees and um, that comes down here i've got another tap in here so as i can shut that off and just have pure cold which is why we've got this little bit here uh, that goes then goes down into there again another t piece the split here is it splits off one two uh, regular old garden hose if I just needed water for something and um, I used to have access out into the the driveway there and we would wash the dogs and stuff so we would use that with nice warm water if need be and um, oops and then the other one splits out this way and goes into my HMA filter which is uh, heavy metal axe will be a video link up here somewhere but it's a pre-filter and two different types of carbon filters now, this is the water line which ends up here so this is the very end of this and all it does is it snakes up here runs across down and across I have another tea piece feeding this tank over here and then in each one we've got one of these and then at the end I just at the end I just have it open I have a little tap in it and um, so as I can turn this off so I'm talking to manual water changes it really is as simple as that um, pretty cheap to do pretty easy to do and makes life so much easier when you want to change water in lots of tanks so that's it for this video I'll finish tidying up all of this and then the next one hopefully I probably won't have done this but next thing is to source a new tank for this and the reason that I want a bigger tank there is because 
this one's gotta go. I've got my tumble dryer down here. I want to get a washing machine next to it. It doesn't quite have space and it's this rack that's in the way. Uh, and this, that, this tank here is patched together like nobody's business. You see here on the side of the tank, it's actually just literally bits of uh, bits of acrylic that I've just cut to shape. There's a massive crack running all the way across here. It's held together with silicon and bits of acrylic patched onto it. It's been like that for years, so it definitely works. Uh, and then on the other side, I've put in a fake wall because it's cracked on that side as well. The brace, uh, it did have a central brace, that's not there either, so yeah, it's, it's hope that's keeping this tank together. So I'm definitely not going to be able to move it. So it's a shame because I only need to move it about two inches this way so as I can fit the washing machine down there. But the plan is that we'll get rid of this, swap it with a big tank on this side, move all the fish over to that, take this out completely and then just have like a worktop down here so as I've got a bit of a working area. And there's a, a, an alcove type area there where it's, it's just over two foot wide so I could probably get a couple of two foot tanks stacked up there on that side as well. Which I think will be better because it will give me a little bit of working space. And it is a little bit claustrophobic. Those of you that have been in here before um, will know that. So hopefully it will be a bit of a nicer place to be. Anyway, we'll leave it there. I'll go and finish off all these little jobs. And we'll see you next time. As always, click that subscribe button. Share it. Get word out there. Like, comment. All the good things. We'll see you next time. Bye.